Hey guys, I'm Nico and this is Fixed and Free. So this new year, I just finished building up a brand new bike and I'm prepping it for my first race of the year, the Atlas Mountain Race in Morocco. So the Atlas Mountain Race is a self-supported ultra distance bikepacking race that takes you across the High Atlas and the Anti-Atlas Mountains of Morocco. Now self-supported means you'll be on your own once the race starts, so riders will be carrying everything they need with them on their bikes. Now the route is primarily off-road with short stretches of tarmac here and there. Off-road meaning there's going to be gravel roads, there's going to be dirt roads, there's going to be some stuff that kind of resembles a road, there's going to be some stuff that resembles nothing like a road. So we all got to be prepared for a rough ride. I imagine a lot of people will be taking on the race on like a hardtail mountain bike, or if you're like me, a gravel specific bike with the biggest volume tires you can possibly squeeze inside. So my bike of choice is going to be my Squid Bikes Gravtron. Now it's brand new, in fact it's so new it's still a prototype. So the Gravtron is Squid's take on a proper gravel bike and right from the get go this thing is part of time excellent. It is beautifully paired with the Fixation Sparta full carbon race fork. So over the last month I've been able to take it out on the road out on the gravel, and even found some sketchy single track. The geometry was designed to get rad with both 650B and 700C wheels, and I've indeed gotten rad with both. Now the frame is steel, and it's handmade in Kawasaki, Japan at Above Bike Store. It has all the squid touches like the wishbone rear triangle, paragon dropouts, and that oh-so-sick custom spray bike paint job done by the squids themselves in Sacramento. The matching fixation Sparta fork is like my ideal bike packing and gravel racing fork. It's got triple bosses on both sides for mounting cargo cages, fender mounts, and my personal favorite touch, internal dynamo routing. The frame and fork are held together with a beautifully anodized purple White Industries headset. So since this bike was designed for gravel with bike packing in mind, I built it up with a component group that I thought would fit the bill. The cockpit is all about zip. The Service Course SL70 Explorer handlebars are Zip's new all-road and gravel drop bar. It's got a gentle flare, a shallow drop, and a short reach. The bars are wrapped in Physique Terra Bond Cush tacky tape and paired with a Zip SL Speed carbon stem painted to match the frame. Clamped to the top of the bars are the VUCA clips with the VUCA carbon aero extensions. Now people get weird about aero bars. I used to get weird about aero bars, but then I started racing ultra distance and now I get weird with the aero bars. Like I couldn't imagine doing a race like Atlas Mountain or Transcontinental or even like a DKXL without them. Everyone's got their own opinion on them. Personally, I think they're rad. Now in the back, the custom painted Zip SL Speed Carbon Seat Post is paired with a Physique Arione saddle rounding out the cockpit. The drivetrain is all SRAM ETAP axis 12 speed and it's set up with a mullet. That means business in the front and a party in the rear. So up front I've got SRAM red brakes and levers, 165 millimeter SRAM red crank set with a quark power meter and a 40 tooth chain ring. The back is where the party's at with an Eagle XX1 12 speed rear derailleur and an Eagle XX1 10 to 50 cassette. Pedals are Crank Brothers Candy 3's. The wheels are Zip 303 Firecrests and they're 650B. Set up tubeless, I have a Terravail Cannonball 650x47 in the rear and a Terravail Sparwood 27.5x2.1 up front. The front wheel is also specially laced to a Sun Dynamo. Both wheels are built by hand by the master wheel builders in Indianapolis at Zip. Now the Dynamo powers a sine wave beacon headlamp which also doubles as a charging port for Charging ETAP batteries, charging my phone, charging my Wahoo GPS unit, and anything else that might need power over the course of the race. The sine wave and the Wahoo are mounted to the zip stem with the F3 cycling form mount, which bolts right to the stem faceplate. I'm also using the F3 cycling phone mount, which is a magnetic mount that bolts right to your top cap. So the things that I like to nerd out on the most when it comes to bikepacking setups are the bags. Now there's a million ways to carry stuff on your bike and everyone has stuff they love and everyone has stuff they hate. Personally, I never really dug on racks. I've always preferred bags. There's plenty of racks out there that'll get the job done, but they're just not for me. So when I was prepping for the Tour Divide last year, I contacted Joe at j about outfitting my single speed Trek 1120 with a set of his bags. Now the Trek 1120 comes with racks, 
Actually like really well made racks. But like I said, I'm into bags. Joe made me a seat pack, a snack pack, two rucksacks, and a full frame pack. I was so in love with the setup that when I got the Gravtron, I had Joe make me a frame pack for that as well. And now I've got a fully packed out bike ready for action. Now the seat pack is about 11 liters and it carries my sleep kit. Generally when I'm bike packing, everything I need for the end of the day goes in the seat pack because it's the stuff I need to access the least. The snack pack on the top tube and the two rucksacks are pretty much there for carrying food. I'll use one of the rucksacks to carry a 25 ounce water bottle and the rest of the space will get used up with whatever I can stuff in it to stuff in my gut. Now the frame pack is custom fit for my bike bolts right into the water bottle bosses and then straps to the top with a drawstring. Now the cargo space is split between the top and the bottom. In the bottom I'll be carrying all the heavy items like tools, spare parts, first aid kit, water filter, and anything else that's heavy that I don't need quick access to. In the top pocket I'll carry things like arm warmers, leg warmers, a vest, maybe a bandana, and then a bunch of extra space for food storage as well. I should point out that the main compartment also has a pocket for a hydration bladder and the top of the bag has ports for running a hydration hose through if that's how you choose to carry your water. For the Atlas Mountain Race, I'll be carrying my water reserves in two 32 ounce Nalgene bottles mounted to the fork via King Many Thing cages. So now that the bike is built and the bags are on, I'll get to spend some time sussing out exactly what I'll take with me to Morocco. This isn't my first bike packing race, so I have a pretty good idea of what's coming with me. But now that the bike is all sorted out, it'll be a lot easier to dial in the kit. So stay tuned for my next video where I'll take you through my pack list for the AMR. I'll go through my sleep kit, my apparel kit, my just in case kit, and the one thing I'll never go bike packing without. So if you're not already, make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you smash that like button, and follow me on Instagram at indigo underscore Nico. If you've got any questions about the bike, the build or the race, drop me a line in the comments and I'll try and get back to you there or in next week's video. Until then, this is Fixed and Free, I'm Nico, and I'll see you next time.